Hey, what's up, everybody? Steve Schwartz here from LSAT Unplugged, joining you today to share why this year and this year only, the April LSAT is actually a great choice. The reason this year is unique is because it's the year that LSAC is removing the logic game section and replacing it with a second scored logical reasoning section, beginning with the August 2024 LSAT. Now, normally, April's a kind of a weird time to take the LSAT because it's too late for the cycle that just finished up, and it's a bit early for the cycle opening up in the fall. So my thoughts have historically been, why take it in April when you could give yourself two more months, take it in June, still have the chance to retake it later in the summer, and apply at the beginning of the cycle in the fall. And that still is true, but this year things are a bit different because of the Logic Games removal after June. What this means is that April is your second to last chance to take the LSAT with the Logic Game section, June being your final chance to take it with the Logic Game section. So April is a great target test date. If you want to take the LSAT with Logic Games, then you've got June as your last final backup opportunity to take it with the Logic Games section. And then of course, after that point, any effort you had invested in Logic Games would be largely wasted because there won't be any more Logic Games on the LSAT beginning with the August exam. So you have a decision to make. Do you take the LSAT with the Logic Game section or without the Logic Game section? If you are a non-native English speaker or if you come from more of a STEM background, historically, folk, you should know that folks from these groups tend to do quite well on Logic Games relative to other sections of the exam because Logic Games don't have the same dense vocabulary, don't have the same perceived ambiguity of language that you'll see on the Logical Reasoning section or the Reading Comp section. In contrast, those from humanities backgrounds tend to have a tougher time with the games and do relatively better on logical reasoning and reading comp. However, regardless of your background, you should know the logic game section is the most learnable and even, I would say, perfectible section of the exam. If we look at students who get 170 or above on the LSAT, they typically score perfect on logic games, maybe minus one, and then they're losing two to three points on each of the other sections. So I would recommend, if you can, aiming to be done with the LSAT before they remove the Logic Games section so that you get the chance to take it with Logic Games, which I think are a great asset. If you've never studied for the LSAT before, I recommend putting in at least a couple of weeks on Logic Games specifically to see if you can improve significantly. In my experience, most students can. However, if you hate the games, if you're scared of them, of course, in that case, I would say, don't worry, you could take the LSAT in August or beyond without the games. Law schools do not care which version of the test you take. They don't care if you take it with the games or without the games, just as they don't care if you take it in person or remotely, online or on paper with accommodations. If, whether you take it with extra time or not, they don't even know. And so it's really your choice to make here. However, all that being said, the April LSAT is a great time to take the LSAT this year because it's your second to last chance with the games. You can take it again in June and still apply at the very beginning of the cycle in the fall. And if it turns out you had tech issues or proctoring issues or the games just didn't go your way at all, totally fine. You still have the chance to retake it again in August and apply to law school at the very beginning of the cycle in the fall. Now, if you'd like my help getting ready for the LSAT, either with the games or without the games, if you're aiming for a 170 plus LSAT score, I'd love to help you out. Check out the links below this video to find out more and to book a call with me and my team. We'd love to help you out, and there are a variety of ways we can support you, whether it's through our live online classes via Zoom, on-demand video courses, small group coaching, and one-on-one -on -one coaching. Again, link below to book a call and find out more. Now, I also wanted to mention that at the time of recording this video, there are still several months between now and the April LSAT. So if you're thinking about how do you use this time over the next three, four, five months, depending on when you're watching this, I would recommend, as always, build the foundation first. Watch course lesson videos, read LSAT prep textbooks, use this time wisely, and again, devote special care to the logic games to see if you can improve on them significantly. Again, in my experience, most students can. Once you've built that foundation, then move on to individual timed sections to work on your pacing, and finally, pull it all together with endurance doing full-length timed practice tests. If you're taking the April LSAT, you'll be taking it with the game section, of course, so that means you're going to have one scored section of games, one scored section of reasoning, and one scored section of reading comp, along with one unscored section of either reasoning or reading comp. You will not have any 
unscored experimental sections of logic games because LSAC is no longer testing those out since they have enough in the bank to carry them through the January, February, April, and June LSATs. You got a two out of three chance of it being logical reasoning, one out of three chance of it being reading comp. So you're going to want to likely include two logical reasonings, one scored, one unscored, along with one section of games and one section of reading comp. Again, all four of those sections to work on your endurance in the build up to test day. Anyway, folks, that's all for now. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.